We are here descending this day one mountain and just sliding onward to our closing keynote with none other than Brian Oblinger. Brian is a community consultant with over 25 years experience in our industry. He's worked with hundreds of companies like Acer, Autodesk, Comcast, eBay, Home Depot, PlayStation. He helps brands engage their customers to increase satisfaction, lower costs, we all love that, and generate more revenue through the power of community, of course. He is the founder and lead instructor of Community Strategy Academy, co-host of In Before the Lock podcast, which many of us know. And in a talk sponsored by Gainsight, he'll be speaking with us on the fundamentals of the community roadmap. Brian, go on and get it. It is all you. Hey, thanks, Victoria. I really appreciate it. Um, all right. Good to see everybody. Hello, hello. I am going to, uh-oh, let's see here. Is it going to let me share my screen? We'll give it a shot and find out. There we go. Okay, very good. Um, so uh, we're going to get right into it because I have a very quick uh, little time for you all here today. So I'm going to get you through some really practical stuff as quickly as possible. Now, this is an abridged version of a course that I recently published. And at the end, I'm just going to give it to you for free. So if you stick around, uh, I'll give you a code at the end, and then you can go grab it uh, however you would like. And I can see the chat here. So uh, if you have questions and whatever along the way, please do uh, let me know, and we'll be happy to uh, to check that out. So what's a roadmap? Let's talk a little bit about that. Um, first of all, you know, there's some confusion around this because sometimes we talk about roadmaps. Sometimes we talk about operational plans. Sometimes we talk about project plans. So for the purposes of this uh, conversation, I'm going to define roadmaps as it's, it's a governance document that basically outlines the organization, prioritization, delivery, timing, you know, all of those sort of higher level bits. Um, it's typically not as in the weeds as a full operational plan, but it's meant to be something that you can take around your company and say, hey, look, here's what we're doing. Here's you know, roughly when we're doing it. Now, you might be thinking, some of you are probably saying, Brian, what the hell are you talking about? Like, of course we have a roadmap, but you would be shocked, all of you, how many times I show up to organizations and say, hey, show me your roadmap. What's the plan? Where are we going? What are we doing? When are we doing it? And I sort of get these blank stares back in my direction. So uh, that is a good sign for me that I need to, uh, you know, certainly go and uh, have a conversation about this and, and talk through it. So that's what we're doing today. Um, all right, so let's do this. And I see now, uh, actually, let's put this in slideshow mode to get you some full screen stuff. There we go. Um, all right, so why do you need a roadmap? Some of these might be obvious, but first and foremost, I want you to align your community program to your strategic company goals. And that's one of the things that really a roadmap is about. If you take nothing else from this, know that it's about aligning and communicating to people, you know, here's what we're doing as a company and therefore here's what we're doing uh, from a community perspective. So they can draw that very straight line to it, okay? Um, the second piece is it helps you force prioritization uh, of your operational plan. Usually when I talk to people, I say, hey, what's the plan? What are we doing? When are we doing it? They're like, we're doing it all, you know, <laughs> we're doing it all. We're doing it all the time. It's going to be amazing. And I just know that you can't do that, right? I've been doing this long enough to know you have to have some prioritization. And when you start putting things into a roadmap, it forces you to think about, oh, I actually can't do all of this, right? I have to be very specific about what we're doing and when we're doing it and what are our resources. So it's as much a tool for you uh, to prioritize and, and understand what you're you know, what you need to do as it is for communicating. Um, it also helps you simplify the plan for the broader audience, right? A lot of times we forget that other people inside of companies, they don't do this. They don't know about community. They haven't spent their whole lives doing it like we have. And so a sort of simplified, broad plan to say, hey, here's what community is. Here's what we're doing. Here's how we're going to set some expectations around it is actually a really fundamental tool that all of you should be building uh, and have at your disposal uh, at any time. Expectation setting and a defense mechanism, right? So um, oftentimes people start coming to you and saying, hey, when are we gonna do this? Can we do this? We wanna add this other thing. The CEO comes down one day and says, I had a bright idea. We have to stop everything and do this. That's a great time to pull out the roadmap and say, hey, uh, love your idea. Uh, here's where we're at. Here's what we're working on. Here's what the next several quarters are like. 
we'd love to slot you in uh, at some later date, right? Uh, and so it's a good way to sort of set expectations and also use it as a defense mechanism, frankly, uh, against bad ideas, <laughs> okay? Um, so some common components, uh, and again, I'm gonna roll through this pretty quick. We'll give you the course for free if you wanna spend some more time on it. Um, common components, a carefully organized list of strategic initiatives, right? If nothing else, a roadmap should basically be Here's the things that we're focusing on. Here's the big rocks, right? Here's the big pieces that we know we have to do. Uh, you also want some high level themes, categories, you know, tracks, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to show you some real examples of these that you can just steal from me and go use. So uh, don't worry, I'll go through the components here in list form and then we'll show you some real examples that you can use. Um, a sense of past performance, right? Oftentimes when we think about roadmap, we think, forward looking, right? What are we doing next? What's coming next? And of course, that's very important and that's what people want to know. But to set up that piece, what you want to do is show a little bit about the past to sort of set up, hey, actually, we've been doing a lot of things. We've made a lot of progress, right? This has worked for us. This is a process that we do. So don't always just clip off, you know, the stuff that you've already done. Make sure you show some of that too, because I think it's really useful to help people understand, oh, okay, this is an ongoing thing. They're doing a lot of work. They've delivered a lot in the past um, to give you that legitimacy of what you're going to do in the future. Okay. Last but not least, uh, short, medium, and long-term timelines with commitments. Um, you know, typically there's different types of roadmaps. Some are a year, some are a quarter, some are five years. You know, it's totally up to you. But I think the best roadmaps that I've seen do a little bit of all of those and show you, hey, here's what we're doing tomorrow. Here's what we're doing next quarter. And here's what we're doing a year from now or two years from now or whatever time frame you can do. But ultimately what that means is you have to make commitments, right? It's easy to make a commitment to what we're doing this week or next week or next month um, to sort of say, hey, what are we doing two quarters from now? What are we doing a year from now? Uh, that takes some vision from you and some, you know, sort of forecasting and ultimately putting a stake in the ground and saying, we are going to do this. Now, does it mean that once you put that on a slide or, you know, in your Asana or like wherever you do your roadmap, that it's set in stone? Absolutely not. These things are changing all the time. I don't know that I've ever built a roadmap at the beginning of a year and ended the year with the, you know, the same roadmap. In fact, most of the time it looks completely different. So, but the, I'm still making commitments throughout there, right? So it's not just putting stuff on a slide or whatever to be pretty. It's us saying, hey, these are actually things we are going to do. Okay, so let's look at some examples. Now I have two for you. One is a very high level, you know, kind of big roadmap like this. And then the other one is, is a little bit different. And I'll kind of talk about the differences. So in this case, this is just a sort of high level quarterly, I would call this an overview, actually, like in a way it's a roadmap, but it's actually kind of more of an overview of a roadmap, if that makes sense, um, which is why it says roadmap overview. Um, and so broken down by quarters, you can see this, you know, kind of as an example of a new, a net new community, right, where they're just getting started. And we're saying, okay, you know, in Q2, we're going to complete a strategy. We're going to get stakeholder buy-in. We're going to select a vendor. We're going to hire a community manager. We're going to do these things to sort of set us up, right, for where we're going and what we're doing. Then you sort of segue into, all right, what's next? Well, if you followed me, there's sort of this discovery strategy, planning, building, launching, right? So it's kind of following the methodology. But you're basically giving people, a, you know, three to four quarters here of here's what the high level plan is. Now, this is the kind of thing that like I would probably present to an executive audience instead of giving them all the details, just give them like, here's the six things you need to know about the next four quarters, right? Um, and if they wanna go deeper, that's great. You know, we can certainly do that. But, you know, for all intents and purposes here, I just wanna give them a high level overview to kind of simplify it. So going back to some of those points I made a minute ago, you're showing priority, you're simplifying it, you're making it very clear when we're doing these things. If we're already in Q3 or Q4, they can see what we did in Q2 or you know Q3. So they have a sense of how we got here. We're building up over time, we're doing these things, right? And so not to belabor the point, you can take a screenshot of this or you know go get it later, but um, this is a good example of, you know, here's how we're doing this from an overview perspective. Um, with that said, and I see some people saying it froze for them. I hope that's not the case. Um, all right, we'll just keep going here. 
Uh, let's see here. So there's a large, uh, here, here's sort of the larger view, right? A little bit more detail. Um, and so this is like a zero to 12 month. So let's kind of start at the top and work our way down. And we'll talk about some of the elements that are present here. Uh, first of all, across the top, we have quarters, right? And I also have months. So obviously there's more granularity here than there was in the previous example. So I'm getting a little bit more specific about when we might be doing things or what it might look like, right? Um, then I have along the left side here, I have some tracks or categories or work streams or whatever you want to call them. But basically where I'm saying very specifically, you know, here's the things we're working on, right? Here's the different sort of categories of stuff. And I like to color code things because I think that simplifies it for people and makes it easier for them to sort of follow along and understand, you know, where things are and where they fit. So again, you know, kind of in accordance with my general methodology, people content technology, and in this case, uh, experience. And then there's a couple of tracks. And so people can very clearly see this. Now, you'll notice that there's no actual dates on this. I break it down by quarter and by month. I'm not really putting dates. The sizes of the boxes do kind of somehow indicate uh, duration or you know how long it might take to do something, but they're not so specific that I'm committing to, you know, this is going to take 14 and a half days in the middle of May. Like I'm, I'm on purpose not building to that level of granularity because it's an overview, right? And if we want to show people much more granularity than we certainly can, but this is usually not the place to do that, right? We just want to show the high level piece. And so again, back to my sort of defensive comment before, you can imagine that if you showed up today and you said, hey, Brian, we have this new thing, you know, the CEO is super pumped about it. It has to happen before the end of the year. And let's say that it's a, let's say that it's a, like a, I don't know, a contest or something, right? And I would basically bring this up and look at the content one there and say, well, you know, we're really busy right now with, you know, kind of our existing content program and we're about to roll out ideation. Um, those are already happening. They're already, you know, in progress. So we can do one of two things. We can either stop doing that and do your new whiz bang, super awesome, you know, thing that you dreamed up, or, we can think about when we do that next year. And I would probably have another slide that would be like months 13 through 24 or something. Um, you know, and so that way I can sort of help people see visually, oh, okay, like actually they don't have time for that or I'm, I'm forcing you to make a decision and have some priority, right? So instead of saying, oh, oh my God, we'll do, yeah, we'll do everything you want. We'll, we'll, we'll you know, we'll, we'll just plug it in right here, right? Stop doing that build this for yourself, maintain it, keep it updated, and then pull it out, right, in those times to help people force prioritization, force understanding, help them, you know, realize that you can't just pop up all the time and, and that sort of thing. Again, these move around all the time. You should be flexible. Your mileage may vary, but that's how I think about this in terms of like the usage of it and what I'm ultimately attempting to communicate. Okay, so you should go build this and have it all the time. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, once I get back to my sharing here. We go. So where do you host it and how do you use it, right? Which is actually almost as important as having it in the first place. Um, put it on any platform you want, right? Sometimes we get in these conversations, people are like, oh, it has to be a slide, it has to be in a sauna, it has to be in Monday, it has to be, you know, in an Excel document in a SharePoint. I don't really care. Where, where it goes, as long as it's the right place for it. As long as it's somewhere that's a platform you and other people can access, that it's easy to manage, it's easy to deal with, then that's where it should go, right? There's no one way to do this. I like to have it in slides, uh, in addition maybe to like, you know, a, a management tool or something, just because I know that in my role as a consultant or, you know, an executive in the past and things like that, we live in slides. And so it's nice to be able to have it in a slide format when someone asks, hey, what are you guys doing next quarter? You know, finance wants to know. Uh, then I can just basically copy and paste that slide uh, into some existing deck and say, here you go, like go present this or I'll present it or whatever. Um, the second bit is anywhere in the company where people can see it. Now this freaks people out a little bit. I'm sure, you know, some of you are like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what, what are you talking about, Brian? My whole point about this is, that the best roadmaps are the ones that people can actually see and consume. 
Now, of course, there's narrative around this. Of course, there's expectation setting around this. But my personal experience is that it's a lot easier when this thing is like in a shared Google Drive or a SharePoint or, you know, Dropbox or Box or like whatever it is that your company uses, put it somewhere and set the permissions so that anybody in the company can see it at any time. There's two reasons for that. One is no one can ever say that they don't know what you do, right? They can't say, well, we have no visibility into the community team. They're just off doing whatever. It's like, nope, our roadmap is public. Anybody can go see it at any time. The second piece is uh, then it's just available for other people to use. And what you might be surprised is how many times you can deflect some of those bad ideas or people trying to edge in on your roadmap or whatever, if they just go look at it themselves and say, oh, okay, like, yeah, they, they probably don't have time, they're busy, whatever. That level of transparency scares people, but I, you should just try it and see what happens because I think actually uh, it's usually a really good thing and it forces accountability for you and the team as well, right? Because you can't hide and say, uh, yeah, I'll get your road, roadmap presentation in six weeks or something. It's like, it's there, they can see it. That forces you to keep it updated, which forces you to keep prioritizing and be honest about what you're gonna deliver. So accountability mechanism uh, or visibility uh, for Max. All right, regularly include it in presentations and updates. The first rule of roadmaps is you talk about your roadmap, right? This thing should be at the end of every deck that you ever present for community ever in your company. Do you need to dwell on it? Do you need to spend a bunch of time? Do you need to make a huge point about it? Do you even show it at the end of a meeting? No, but in the you know deck that you share afterwards, it's at the end, right? And again, no one can ever say they don't know what you're doing. You're setting expectations. You're helping people understand what you do and the value you're bringing to the organization. So don't just create this thing and stick it in a bin, right? You wanna put it everywhere all the time and talk about it and show it and make it available, all right? Leverage as a resource for conversations with leadership, right? I've already talked a little bit about this on the expectation setting side, but let's talk about planning, right? So this time of year, you're all in the planning cycles at your company. You know, we're trying to figure out budget and headcount for next year. You know, sometimes we get into conversations with leadership around, you know, uh, force reductions, you know, these unfortunate things. This is an awesome tool to just have in your back pocket at all time that you can whip out and say, Here's what we're doing. Here's our value. Here's what we're working towards. Here's what we had planned on doing. You know, here's the resources we're going to need, right, to actually fulfill these commitments that we've made. That might be headcount. That might be budget. That might be time. That might be cross collaboration with other groups. It can be like a million different things, right? Uh, but if you have it, then you can use it instead of it being your opinion about what you want or what you think you need. It's more, hey, Here's what we're planning on doing. Here's what we've committed to. If you want to change the plan, we can have that conversation. But if we're aligned that this is the plan and this is what we're doing, then I need A, B, C, X, Y, Z to succeed, right? So that's where you kind of host it and that's how you use it, all right? How to get started. Final, final bit here, right? Uh, so you don't have a roadmap. You never had a roadmap. You're like, this is great, Brian, but I don't even know what I'm doing, I don't know where to start. Cool, no problem, let's talk about it. Number one, just make a list of everything you're already doing, right? Just sit down with a piece of paper or a note on your you know, laptop or whatever it is, and just in simple bullets type out, here's all the stuff that we do today, here's all the stuff that we're gonna do tomorrow, and here's all the stuff we wanna do. Just make a massive flood of bullets, all right? And then you're simply going to take those and start to organize them. You know, probably in, in building out those bullets, there's going to be some core themes, right? So before I had content, technology, you know, programs, you may have those, you may have different ones. But the point is, you're going to have some themes, right? And, and these are going to start to look a little bit like an operational plan. And then you have to prioritize. So if you have a bullet that says content, and there's 17 bullets underneath content, um, then you need to prioritize them and say, well, which one of these is actually more important? And that exercise, by the way, in and of itself might actually shock you and shed some light on what you do every day and what's important, what's not. Um, because when you make a list like that, you start prioritizing, all of a sudden you realize, if I can only do three things or five things well, what happens to the other 12, 10, 
eight things that are beneath that on the list, right? Um, so that'll kind of help you just prioritize in general. Um, bring in those high level themes and outcomes into a timeline like I did, either the high level one or the sort of more detailed one. Um, and then ultimately just add and edit and remove, right? It's a living document. You're gonna make changes. Typically you'll have a date on it somewhere. You did not see those on my examples, but typically down in the bottom corner, you'll have you know, updated November, 2023 or something like that to give people a sense of when was this last updated. I also think that helps with expectation setting. If every time someone loads it up, it's like, this thing's updated every week or it's updated every two weeks or, you know, whatever the case is. Um, then they realize it's a, hey, this is a maintained document. I'm seeing the latest, but it also conditions me to think, oh, maybe like more things are gonna happen next week and I should refresh it again, right? So you're teaching people about what you do and the decisions you make and those sorts of things. So don't be afraid to change it over time. Again, as long as you're actually committing to things. I think where people get in trouble is they commit to a bunch of stuff, they put it in their roadmap and then it just everything is constantly getting bumped back and bumped back and bumped back. If that's the case, then you have other things to discuss, right? You need to know, do we not have enough people? Do we not have the right, re like why are these things keep getting pushed back? We need to actually solve that. The roadmap is not the problem. The execution is the problem. And so in that way, it can also help you discover, you know, other things that are going on and help you diagnose those as well. Okay, that was a lot. I'm talking really fast. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Um, I'm gonna show you this and then I'm gonna take a scroll through the, the uh, comments here. If you have any you know questions or anything like that, happy to answer with the time I have left. If you go to the Academy, the link is here, use code ROADMAP for this specific course and you'll get it totally for free. It's like, I think it's $49 regular price. So uh, that's my gift to you is just take it and use this. Um, and I hope that you all go and build epic roadmaps and set better expectations and just overall have better plans for how you're gonna execute whatever it is that you do every day. I think you'll find that when you start doing this and you do it consistently over some period of time, you'll come to realize that you should have been doing this all along and that it is an incredibly valued, valuable tool, even if on the surface, it just seems kind of like, who cares? It's, it's a roadmap, whatever. Um, so that would be my advice is just jump in and start doing that. Um, with that said, let me take a gander here at the uh, chat and see if there's any good questions that anybody wants answered. Um, let's see, let's see. Brian, Brian. Spot for the number of bullet points on a roadmap, Piper Wilson. Uh, the answer to that is not really. <laughs> um, you know, whatever looks good on a slide. I mean, I think you can see from mine that realistically speaking, uh, oh, and some of you are asking for the for the uh, URL. So it's, uh, yeah, it's just community dash roadmaps at the end. I'm sorry, I see my uh, my face is covering that. Sorry about that. So uh, to, to fill out Piper's question here, the answer is that um, no, there's no set amount of stuff that needs to be on there. It's just make it high level enough that it's not too granular, but not too granular either that it's too much detail or it causes confusion or, or whatever the case might be there. Um, so that's the answer to that one. There you go. I see I see Victoria shifting around our faces so you can see the link there, uh, which is- uh, Brian, can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Okay, I can share the questions with you. You don't have to sift through the chat. Oh, that's no fun. <laughs> All right, I mean, your call. No, go for it. All right, lit. We've got just two questions anyway. Um, and another one here, but what are the key indicators that a brand or organization is ready to start building a community? Okay, not a small question. <laughs> well, uh, switching gears a little bit, um, you know, what I always say is there's some kind of basic tests around this stuff, meaning do you have an audience that is a big enough size to make community viable? Uh, that's one. The second one is, is your community, is your company ready, right? Do you have the right culture? Do you have the right buy-in? Do people understand community enough uh, to make that something that we want to do uh, as a long-term, you know, kind of play? Uh, and then I think the third one is, you know, just resources. Like if you're there and you're asking this question, that's a good thing. Um, but a lot of companies are like, hey, we want to do community, but we don't want to hire anybody. We'll just make it, you know, 10% of someone in marketing's time or whatever. That's usually a sign to me that maybe you're not actually uh, fully ready for that. 
for sure. Uh, love the laser responses because we're going to move. So another question is, what would you recommend for setting the stage to have the conversation with leadership? What needs to be there? Yeah, I mean, I, I think first and foremost, it's education, right? Like, I, I think the worst thing that we can do is jump into these conversations and assume that people actually know what community is, what the value of it is, why we're doing it. I think we have to be educators, whether we like it or not. I know I know some of us are tired of doing that, but I, I think it's just a recognition of where we're at at this stage that community is still really new for a lot of people and they need some base level education. And so, you know, I would start with that before we dive into like strategy and platforms and, you know, all this kind of stuff is just like, do we actually understand this as an organization to a level at which I feel like we're ready to, you know, kind of move to the next phase, whatever that might be. For sure. Thank you. And a final question. Um, as a consultant, or even if one was a single team member, mm -hmm. how do you literally discern which items are actually priority? Do you have a prioritization process? Sometimes it's hard if you're by yourself to really create a barometer off yourself. You may think what you're thinking is important when it may be this other stuff. So how do you actually yeah. process that for yourself? I think I think you you as a community professional and that solo person or the leader of a team need to have a perspective and a vision for what your community is and isn't. And I think you need to take that vision and go craft, you know, a strategy and then a roadmap and, and all this stuff. And then I think what you want to do is take that once you have a pretty good cut of it and go socialize it with your leadership and say, does this feel right? Does it feel like I've captured the main things that we're trying to do? Have I adequately connected it to the company goals or the departmental goals or, you know, what we've set out to do? And then, you know, maybe the next step after leadership is doing the same with the cross collaborational team, go to product, go to marketing, go to support, go to sales, go to, you know, whoever it is and say, how does this feel to you? Did I capture your needs and requirements? You know, that's not to say that everything's a priority, but it's just gaining understanding of, did I actually nail this? And am I building something that fulfills our needs? And, you know, sometimes that's a scary thing to do. Uh, I totally get that. But I think it's a necessary thing to do. Because if you're just operating in a vacuum without asking those questions or talking to the right people or validating your strategy or your plan, then I think that's where you're going to get in trouble. Six months down the line, you've been putting in all this work and people are saying, this isn't at all what we thought it was going to be, right? So just avoid that by doing the work up front with the collaboration and leadership to make sure you're in the right ballpark. And then I think you're going to be fine, you know, from there on out. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Brian, for your time, your energy, uh, your gift to us all, really unexpected and unbelievable. So thank you again. There are still some questions in the chat, so you'll have to do that over I there. I will go in, in, in true Brian fashion. I will answer every question in the chat. So stay tuned. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> thank you for your time.